Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to be Romans 1 to 6, Proverbs 22, and Psalm 88. Let's get started. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised before him through his prophets <coughs> and the Holy Scriptures concerning his son. He was descended from David, going to the flesh, and was declared to be the son of God, in power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection, his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship, to you at the obedience of faith, for the sake of his name, among all the nations, and claim you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all those young men who are loved by God and are called to be saved. Grace to you, peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus I thank my God, <coughs> my God through Jesus Christ, for all of you. This is your faith is proclaimed in all the world. And my God is my witness, whom I serve with the Holy Spirit and the gospel of his Son. Uh, this son, without, and without, without seeing I mention you always in my past, asking that somehow by God's will that I may now not at last succeed in to succeed in coming to you. <coughs> so I long to see you, that I may impart to you by some spiritual gift to spread me, that is, that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. I do not want you to be um, aware, brothers, that I have often intend to come to you. Come to you, and all that I may leave some harvest among you as well as among the rest, the rest of the Gentiles. I am under obligation, both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. So I am eager to preach the gospel to you, as those who are mine. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, from to the Jew first and to the Greek. And in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. From <coughs> faith to faith, as is me. And the righteous shall live by faith. Now the wrath of God is revealed from heaven, and for them against all ungodliness and unrighteousness. And we by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Suppress the truth. For what can be known in that God is plain to them? Because God has shown the truth. For his invisible attributes, namely, his eternal power and divine nature, has been, clear, has been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world. And we take that being there. So we are without excuse. For our lady Nico, they did not honor him as God and give thanks to him. And it came futile. <coughs> in their thinking, and their full shards were the dark and Going to their wise, they become false, and exchange the God as the immortal God. The images resemble mortal men, and birds, and animals, and creepy things. Therefore, God appears to them and lost their hearts to fear, to the dishonoring of their bodies among the stars. Because they exchange the truth about God for a lie, worship, and serve the future of the creator, and the blessed of the end. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonoring and passions, but they were not exchanging natural relations for those that are contrary to you, contrary to nature. And the men my past gave up natural relations, for they were consumed with passion for them. They were committing shameless acts with men, and receiving them themselves with due purposes for their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge with God, God gave them up to a debased man to do what ought not to do. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, perversity, and malice. They were full of envy, murder, strife, deceit. <coughs> <coughs> Maliciousness. They are gossip. They are gossip, slander, haters, insolent, holy, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless, ruthless. Now they know God's righteous decree that they ought, that those who practice such things deserve that. Not they not only do so, but give approval to those who practice them. Therefore, you have no excuse, and then every one of you who judges, you are passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself, because you need to judge, practice the very same thing. <coughs> you know that the judgment of God you know, rightly falls on those who practice such things. Do you suppose I know that you who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourself? Then you will escape the judgment of God. Or do you presume on the riches of this, his kindness and the forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? Well, because you harden and pen to his heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment will be over. You will render to each one according to his word. To those who by patience and will only seek for glory and honor and immortality, immortality, he will give eternal life. But to those who are self seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, they will be wrath and fear. Will be taken in distress for every human being who does evil. The Jew who first, the Jew first knows the, the glory and honor and peace for everyone who does good. The Jew first knows the glory, but God has no partiality. And I shall for all the sins that the law. Most of the parish earned without the law, and all the sins of the law will be judged by the law. 
I start to hear something in the right and I chase me for a girl. Like the door is something all who will be just fine. When, when the Gentiles you do not have them, I need to do with the Lord. I say, I'll watch them. So, you know, they do not have them. <clears throat> they show that the work of the Lord is not in their hearts. While their conscience is a best place, and they conflict it. <coughs> so, what's accused or even excused? I want to do one according to our gospel. <coughs> God judges the secrets of men by Christ Jesus. Now if you call yourself a Jew, rely on the Lord and boast in God and know his will. Now your prayer quite is excellent because you're instructed from the Lord. And if you are sure with that you yourself are a guide to the Lord, a light to those who are in darkness, an instructor of the fools, a teacher of children, having in the Lord the embodiment of knowledge and truth, very you then who teach others, do you not teach yourself while you preach against stealing, do you steal? You say that one must not commit adultery. Do you commit adultery? You have whole idols, do you? Do you rob temples? You keep boasting the law of dishonoring God by breaking the law. For as it is written, the name of God is blessed in among the Gentiles because he <coughs> has circumcision indeed is a fact. You may obey the law, but if you break the law, your circumcision becomes uncircumcision. So if a man who is uncircumcised keeps the free of the law, will not his uncircumcision be required in circumcision? Then he who is physically uncircumcised and that keeps the law. Will condemn you who have the green coat in circumcision but break the law. But no one is a Jew but who is merely one, <coughs> one outwardly, nor circumcision outward and physical. But a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision is a, is a matter <coughs> of the heart, and by the spirit, by the spirit, not by the letter. It is praise is not from the head but from God. Um, well then, what then, what advantage has the Jew? Well, what is the value of circumcision? I should never wait to begin with. The Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. Why is someone unfaithful? Does their faithlessness and nullify the faithfulness of God? I know you is like I'll be true. <coughs> no, everyone were a lie. This is written really that you may be justified in your worth and prevail when you are judged. The vow I imagine serves to show serves to show us to show the righteousness of God. I, what, what shall we say? That God is our righteousness to inflict wrath in God. Or half of us? Uh, no means. For how then? How could God judge the world? Okay, but if through my lie, God's truth, but if through my lie, God's truth bears to His glory, His glory, then I am I still being condemned? Condemned as a sin. Why do you not do evil that give me come? Uh, some people slanderously charge us with sin. Hey, condemnation is just. Uh, one thing, are you using any better than this? Uh, no, not at all. We've already charged all that, all with Jesus and grace. I'm not understanding this is written. No one's righteous, no one, no, no, not in one. No one understands, no one seeks with God. We're all trying to suck. And together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. <coughs> their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to see. Their venom of ass is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. And in their hearts are run their misery. In the way of peace they have not known. Not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. You know, we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law. So that every mouth may be stopped. The whole world may be held accountable to God. But well, by works of the law, no human being will be justified in sight. Since the earth will not. Since the earth will comes along just soon. And now the righteousness of God has been manifested in half of the law. <coughs> now that is the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets bear witness to the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ for all who believe. But there is no distinction for all who sin and fall short of the glory of God. We are not justified by His grace as gift, who through redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Um, God put forward as a precipitation and <coughs> propitation in his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's God's righteousness. Um, because in his divine forbearance he passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and <coughs> Just and be the justifier of the one who is raised in Jesus. And what becomes without what becomes without boasting is excluded. By what kind of law? By the law of no, but by the law of faith. But we hold that one is justified. One is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Or is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles? Yes, sir. Yes, the Gentiles are seen as God is one. We will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we then overthrow the law by this faith? By no means, on the contrary, we uphold the law. <coughs> what then shall we say? When, what then shall we say was gained by Abraham? Our forefather according to the flesh, 
Though Abraham was justified by his by work, he has something to boast about, but not before God. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him in righteousness. And uh, to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as a student. And to the one who does not work, but believes it. <coughs> him he justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Just as David is there, the seeks of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness, apart from works. Unless all those whose laws to eat <coughs> are forgiven, and his sins are covered, and the master of the man against him, the law will not account of sin. And is this blessing then only for the circumcised, or also for the uncircumcised? Well, you see that faith is counted to Abraham of righteousness. Now that was counted to him. Was it before or after he had been circumcised? It was, it was not after, but before he was circumcised. He received the sign of circumcision as a seal for the unrighteous, and he had by faith while he was still being un or he was still being uncircumcised. Our purpose was to make him the father of all who believe without being circumcised, <clears throat> so that the righteous would not be counted to them as well, and to make him the father of the circumcised who are not merely circumcised, but, who, but who also walk in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring, they who would be heir of the world, <clears throat> did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. And for this, the adherents of the law, not to be the heirs, hair, faith is not. Faith is not in the promises of God, for the law brings wrath. Wrath, right, so where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all often, not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is father of us, of us all. It is written, I have made his father many nations in the presence of God in whom we believe, and who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. In hope he believed against her that he should become the father of many nations, as he had been taught, so shall it also be. He did not weaken in faith, when he considered his own body, which is as good as death, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No other unbelief may him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. But he convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. This is why his faith is counted to his righteousness, as the words it was counted to him were not written for a sacred one, but for ours as he will be counted to us who believe in him, who raised him. Who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our trespasses, who rose for our justification. And who was since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we used to have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces growth, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. We will scarcely die for a righteous person, but perhaps for a good person while we're dead even to die. The boss shows his love for us, and then in that while we were still sins, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For before we were enemies, we, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Other than that, we also re rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. And therefore, just as, just as sin came into the world through one man, then death through sin, so, and so death spread to all men, because all sin, all sin, for sin indeed was in the world, was in the world before the law was given. But sin is not counted, counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned before, yet death reigned from Adam to us. You and ever. And as he seems not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come, that the free gift is not like the trespass. When he died through one, one man's trespass, uh, much more has the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abound for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one, one man's sin. And now the judgment following one's trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brought just, justification. But if it is one man's trespass, Death reigned through that one. Much more will those, will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. And therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one man act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. And for as by the one man's disobedience, and the many were made sinners, so by the one man's abuse, many will be made righteous. And so now the law came in to increase the trespass. 
but less than increased grace and found it ultimate, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may be better? By no means, how, then, how can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us, <coughs> all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? We were buried, we were buried therefore, with him by baptism into death. You know that just because we raised from the dead by the blood of God, we too might walk in the newness of life. But if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall suddenly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We hear that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of the sin had been built to him, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. One who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. Live with him. And we know that Christ being raised from death. We will never die again. Death is no longer has to make it over. When death he died and he died to sin, once for all, with life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must conceive yourself as death to sin and the life to God in Christ Jesus. You must sin therefore reign in the mortal world. Do you keep obey to Christ? Do you represent your members to sin as instruments of unrighteousness? Do you not yourself to God and to those as those who have been brought from death to life? Do your members to God as instruments for righteousness? Or sin will have no dominion over you. Since you are not under law but under grace. Uh, then are you weak to sin? Because we are not under law but under grace. By no means, or do you not know that if you present yourself to him as a being slaves, you are your slaves of the one whom you obey, by the sin which leads to death, nor of obedience which leads to righteousness. And thanks be to God that you were once slaves of sin, and have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching, to which you were coming, and that having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms. There is your natural limitation, but just as you once present to your members as slaves to your impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. When you are slaves of sin, you are free of God to righteousness. But what fruit will you gain at the time of the thing? But you are now ashamed. But at the end of those things are done, and now you have been set free from sin, and have become slaves of God. And the fruit that you get leads to sanctification. Then and it's an eternal life. Well, the wages of sin is death, and the fruit of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Proverbs 22. A good man is to be chosen rather than great. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. And favor is better than silver gold. Rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. The prince is danger and handsome. But the simple go and suffer for it. The reward for me will in fear of the Lord is riches and learning life. He will sustain us on the way of the court. Crooked, whoever guards his soul will keep far from them. And there any other child in the way he should go. And even when he is ill, he will not depart from them. The ratio was over the poor, and the borrower is a slave of the land. And whoever's lies in justice will reap the empty. And the righteous fury will fail. Whoever bound for iron will be blessed when he shares the bed of the poor. Drama, scoffer, and strife will go. And quarreling and abuse will cease. He will have purity and power. And he sees his gracious world, the king is his friend. And I said, Lord, keep watching the knowledge when he overthrows the ones of his train. Of the traitor, the slug says, There's a line outside. They shall be killed in the streets, so the mouth will be the one that's in deep there. He with him, the Lord's anger will fall into it. The Lord is bound up in the heart of a child, and the Lord's discipline drives it far from him. Whoever oppresses the poor to increase in the womb of love, or gives to the rich, will only come to poverty. You can your ear and hear the words of the Lord. But then, if I your heart to the rich, we will be fast and even with him. If all of them are running out of us, that you trust me, be a little. I made them known to you today, even to you. Have I not room for you that these things will cancel them? To make you know what's right and true, and you may give an entry answer to those who sent you. And you're not rather poor or less, because he's because the afflicted at the gate. At the gate. Now the Lord will please their cause, and rob the wife those who rob them. He can fetch you with a man given to anger, nor go with the wrath of man, unless you learn the place, and then entangle yourself in the snare. Be not one of those who give pleasures, you but it's security for death. You have nothing but with wisdom and wise, you may be taken from under you. Do not move the ancient man, mark the papas, I say. Do you see the man's God for his wife? He will stand for him, so not stand before obscure men. Psalm 88. O oh Lord, God of our salvation, I cry out day and night before you, let my prayer come before you. And cry you into my cry, I oh, will my soul is full of jobs, and my life draws dead to show. I have encountered among those who go down to me, I am a man who has no strength, no strength in me. And like one shut loose among the dead, like the slain of lying there, like those who you remember no more. And they are cut off from behind you, but me in the depths of the pit, in the region of darkness. Your wrath lies heavy upon me, and your evil will be in all your ways. You have caused my companions to jump, and you have made my heart to, to them. I am shouting so that I can ask you, and I am great to them through sorrow. Every day I call upon you, I shout my hands to you, 
Do you work on your foot day so you as a part of rise up to praise you? Is this step is love to grow in the grey? Is your all your faithfulness in the garden? Are you want to stand in the darkness or your righteousness in the light of forgetfulness? For I a little cry to you in the morning when it comes before you. The Lord, why do you cast your soul away? Why do you hide your face from me? The afflict and Christ to death from my death. I have suffered your terrors. I am helpless. Your wrath has swept over me. Your death for soul is destroyed. You surround me like a fly all the day long. All day long they close in on me. You have caused my beloved and my friends to show me. My companions have become dark. Now this night, I should not have to the last fight. He's right here. It's a father in heaven. Now that you are near, you can come. You wait on the first days in heaven. Yesterday I day you I guess the third season of the Sophie Gunnar Tatters is not just a fashion, but the most evil. This is the kingdom of the glory of the Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.